Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Canadian Pacific Railway stock. I released a video a few weeks back and talk about 10 stocks that I want to buy in 2023. And Canadian Pacific was one of those stocks that I want to buy this year. So obviously, I really like this company. I also released a poll on, on stocks you want me to review and Canadian Pacific had the highest number of votes. So here we go. In, a, in this video, I will discuss their business, their future plans for 2023 and beyond, the dividend history of the stock, the risk associated with owning this company, and finally, I will provide a detailed stock analysis using my personal discounted future earnings model and will then provide you with a fair value of this stock depending on your investment goals. The company HQ is located at Calgary, Alberta, and their shares are traded on TSX for almost 104 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a dividend with a starting yield of almost 0.75% and the market capitalization of the company is around 96 billion Canadian dollar. Canadian Pacific is one of the largest Canadian companies and a recession resistant business which was able to consistently grow their business and their dividend in the last 20 years despite various economic challenges we had in the world. They have an undeniable business mode with pretty much no competition in Canada other than Canadian National Railway, another railway company. Not only Canada, it is almost impossible to build another railway route in both United States and Mexico. That's why Canadian Pacific is part of, of an oligopoly in Northern America. It means there is a huge market and only a few players which will share the profits between each other, between themselves. This is also one of the largest holdings of Bill Axman's portfolio and a lot of other hedge fund managers around the world which shows the quality of their business. As such, it is important to know more about their business and see the valuation of their stock at the moment, which is what you will see in this stock analysis video. Before starting the video, I want to emphasize that I'm not a financial advisor. This video is not a financial advice for you to buy, hold or sell this stock. This is just my personal opinion. You should, do, you should always do your own research before making any financial decision. With that being said, let's start this video. Canadian Pacific Railway incorporated in 1881, one of the oldest Canadian companies that was formed to unite Canada and Canadians from coast to coast. CP owns and operates railways and related transportation businesses across more than 13,000 miles networks in Canada and US, which we can see it here, and soon in Mexico, which we will see that route in a few minutes. CP is not only operate a railway business, it is basically a supply chain provider and owns transloading, tracking, distribution centers, logistics, freight forwarding, and transportation management services. The company's portfolio of goods transportations, including foundational and crucial items like grain, food products, forest products, energy, fertilizers, coal, and automotives. They are going to acquire Kansas City Southern as another railway company, with uh, which they have railway roads in Mexico and Southern US. And with that acquisition, they will be the only North American railway company that have a route from Mexico to US and to Canada which means amazing business opportunity for Canadian Pacific. They will be a unique fundamental player in supply chain in North America for transportation of raw materials, energy products, and goods between these three countries. As I mentioned, you cannot build new railway systems, new railway roads, and there would be absolutely no competition for Canadian Pacific. And as Canadian Pacific services is crucial for North America's economy, CP has a very strong business mode and in my opinion, it is one of the safest businesses, business models and companies in the world that you can invest in. In recent words, Canadian Pacific was able to grow their total revenue and EPS or earnings per share consistently. They were able to grow their, their EPS and free cash flow by a relatively fast pace from 2017 to 2021. They grew their APS by almost 17% year over year in this time period, which is amazing. As another example, in recent quarters, in Q3 2022, they increased their total revenue by 19% year over year and their EPS by 15% year over year. It is, however, important to note that the operating expenses of CP also increased by 18% year over year in the last quarter, which is a little bit concerning for the margins of the company, at least in the short term. 
Before buying Kansas City Southern, CP was absolutely focused on buying back shares and increasing its dividend at the same time to return value to investors. We can see amazing amount of share buybacks from 2015 to 2020, but after the acquisition, they should be more careful with capital expenditures. And yes, they stopped dividend hikes and buyback program for a while, which totally makes sense to me. CP has also significantly invested in ESG goals and progressing very well towards decoupling their growth from carbon emissions, which is actually great. They are investing in cool projects like this one, this hydrogen locomotive project to improve their fuel efficiency and reduce emissions, which is all in all really cool stuff to see from CP management team. Canadian Pacific has a long history of paying out and increasing its dividend year over year. They almost tripled their dividend in the last eight years and at the same time bought back the shares of the company which is definitely one of the most consistent records and one of the fastest dividend growth rates and value return to shareholders among Canadian companies. As I mentioned before, after Kansas City Southern acquisition, they temporarily stopped hiking dividends and buying back shares, but with such a low payout ratio, they will probably be able to continue to increase this dividend year over year after a while. As I mentioned, Canadian Pacific has a strong business mode and huge amount of free cash flow and therefore the core business is pretty safe. There are however some concern, concerns about Kansas City Southern acquisition and it comes with some uncertainties. As we should see how much they really can benefit from this acquisition. But in my opinion, the two main potential risks of investing in Canadian Pacific is not related to this acquisition are coming from other sources. These two main risks are similar to risks that Canadian National Railway has, and there are advances in technology and evaluation, which I want to discuss them quickly here. The first one is advances in technology, which may someday makes railways a less efficient way of transporting goods, but I don't think that kind of technology will be here anytime soon. Actually, it is expected that railways basically take even more market share from trucks in terms of transportation of goods in North America in the near future. So I don't think Canadian Pacific is going to lose its most anytime soon. However, the second basically source of uncertainty is very real. Second source is valuation. If you compare the price to earnings and price to cash flow and price to sales of Canadian Pacific to its historical five-year average, you can see that the stock is trading at a significant premium today and it is priced for perfection. Price to earning today is at 33, while the average five-year PE of CP is around 22. Price to cash flow of Canadian Pacific is at 30 today, while the five-year average is only 18. You get what I'm meaning, right? I understand the railway business is a great business with huge moat, but I think the premium here is just too much, and the stock looking expensive compared to its historical valuations. Let's also examine the peg ratio of Canadian Pacific. In the last five years, Canadian Pacific was able to grow its EPS by almost 17% year over year, and according to analysts, they are expected to continue to grow by almost 11% year over year in the next few years. Let's be conservative and say Canadian Pacific will be able to grow by almost 10% in the future. This will give Canadian Pacific a peg ratio of 3.2. A peg ratio of one means the company is fairly valued compared to its uh, growth potential. And anything over one means the company is overvalued. And a peg ratio of 3.2 means Canadian Pacific is definitely overvalued with respect to its growth potential. Even if we go with the historical average growth number of 17%, it still gives us a peg ratio of 1.88, which is still overvalued. My major concern is that buying Canadian Pacific as th at these valuations may not equal to great returns over the long term for investors, even though the business is amazing. And that's why the next part of the video is so important. This is my favorite part of the video where I can show you my stock analysis based on the financial data I discussed in the previous parts of the video. I use a discounted future earnings model and which basically estimates the value of the stocks based on projections for the future earnings. So I make some assumptions about the growth of the company in the next 10 years, and then discount the future earnings per share into the present value of the stock based on my expected rate of return. So I start with the past four quarter adjusted diluted earning per share of the company. And based on three different scenarios, I predict the future earnings of the company in the next 10 years. 
In the bear case or the most negative case for the stock, the company can grow their earnings per share only 6% in the short term and medium term and then the growth will, will drop to 5% in the long term. Again, I try, try to be really conservative with Canadian Pacific in this case as they are an established business and fast growth may not be always possible. I consider terminal multiple of price to earnings of 16 for this case, which is consistent with historical bear periods for a railway stock. For a normal case, I consider a little bit better growth and a terminal multiple of 22, which is historical average multiple for this company. For the bull case or the best possible outcome, I consider the business grew by 14% in the short term and then it drops to 11% in the long term, which is consistent with analyst predictions as well. And I considered a terminal multiple of 28, which is a bull multiple for this company. 14% growth is not out of the realm of possibility for CP. And in fact, they expect to grow around this number in 2023. I assign a 50% chance to the normal case, a 25% chance to the bull case, and 25% chance to the bear case. For growth stock, I usually expect 15% return, but for dividend stable stocks like CP, I expect 10% return. If I expect a 10% return from this company, the fair value of this stock is almost 66 Canadian dollar, which means compared to the current share price of almost $104, the shares are traded at something like 34% premium, which means it's basically not a buy according to the model. It is an expensive stock at this level, and I personally don't want to pay such a high premium to own this company. Of course, if you believe in the bull case numbers, these numbers over here, the current share price is justified. But personally, I like to have margin of safety, and that's why I don't buy CP at these levels. I would like to pay a premium to own such a great business, but not 34% premium. In summary, Canadian Pacific is a low-risk, consistent, recession-resistant Canadian company with a wide moat and a strong business model, which is growing its EPS and cash flow with a relatively fast pace. The stock is currently trades higher than its fair value for 10% return year over year, and it pays a starting yield of close to 0.75%. I personally really like Canadian Pacific, but I would wait a little bit more before starting my position to make sure I can hit my target of 10% year over year return in the next 10 years. Overall, I don't think you will lose any money with Canadian Pacific in the long term, even if you buy it here, but you cannot expect huge returns at these valuations for the long term. At the end of the day, it all depends on your expected rate of return and your risk tolerance. There you are, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel to see similar videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Farewell.